Hi everybody. In late uh, March 2017, Ben Van Burlow and I stopped in at Bobby Walden's Hot Rod Shop uh, near uh, Pomona, California, and uh, got a really nice shop tour from Bobby. Uh, he also gave us a good demonstration on his power hammer, and so that's what we're going to take a look at and you know see how he does it. What he's making right here is a uh, rooftop, uh, a skin for the top of a, a, a 30s Ford. He does that for a lot of 30s cars. Originally they had uh, wooden support slats across them and then often chicken wire and then kind of a leatherette sort of thing on top. And that's because stamping technology at that time was, was limited in size. But now it's much more practical to have a solid metal uh, top on the car. And, and he said he's made over 2,000 of these tops for various cars over the years. It's uh, one of his main sources of income. If you look at the, uh, the sight lines here, the, the, uh, the little bits of light under the buck, that's where the part is not fitting. And so you don't stretch in those areas. You stretch the areas where it is fitting so that you can bring down the other areas, uh, to use a John Glover term, so it will settle on the buck. And he's using his hand here to feel for highs and lows, and he's marking in the oil uh, he covers his uh, panels with uh, WD-40. He's marking in that so that he knows uh, where to, to stretch a little bit more when he goes back. As you see, he is using a foot control on his big Yoder. It's a hydraulic uh, uh, master cylinder that uh, controls the clutch up in uh, the head of the unit. And... I've seen various ways of controlling those yoders, and this is probably the best way because you can move your foot control around uh, the board that he's on, and, and I'll show you that in, in a few minutes. But he's got complete control. Don't think that his swinging it back and forth are, are random uh, uh tracking patterns. Everything here is very precise. You have to hit that panel evenly for it to stretch evenly, and that means you have to have consistent uh, uh, motions. Uh, it has to be tracked across the whole piece. He's got about an hour into this panel right now, and he said that typically he's going to spend between one and four hours to make a roof skin. Why the difference? Well, mostly it's because you're either in the groove or you're not. You know, sometimes your eye and hand coordination is just perfect and you can't miss. And sometimes it seems like, oh, you really got to labor over it, you know, to get it right. Uh, if any of you have ever shot pool, you know that some nights you can go in there and drain the table, and on the next night you can't get anything. And it's the same way with power hammering. You know, sometimes your eyes and hands are just, you know, in a sweet spot and they're getting it, and sometimes not. Okay, look under here again, and you see the light lines. You can see it in the left of the photo, or of the video. So he's checking underneath the table and he'll check on top of the table and he'll come to some decisions about where to strike next. That's Ben Van Burlow uh, discussing uh, various ways of supporting a panel if you're a one-man operation and uh, it, it's hard to do a big panel. You know, m Most people will say the average guy shouldn't do a panel that's over three by three feet. Uh, and you're right at the limit here, probably a little over that limit. And so he's hammering up some areas, and he's getting close, so there'll be more checking the closer you get to. In the background, you can just barely see a little bit of his shop. He and his crew do extremely high-end 
hot rod work. The the you would think they're restoring Bugattis or, or Mercedes. Uh, you know, five forty k Mercedes. Their work is so precise, and the level of detail is absolutely outstanding. Uh, Bobby is not a boss who sits in the office and and you know stares at a computer or stays on the phone all day. He is out there doing it. This is the first buck he made, by the way, and he can uh, use it on several cars, several types of Fords. Um, the area that has the more egg crate slats in it, uh, that's for one car. And then if you're doing another car, it's only those larger sections that he uses. But right now he's making, he's using the whole buck. I would guess that that's made out of... Uh, perhaps 18-gauge, uh, maybe 16-gauge steel. That is the very first buck he ever made, and it's, it's still in use all these years later. At the end of the, this video, I'll show you some of his other bucks that he keeps in storage here. But again, it's only just a few hits, and you go back to the buck, and you're not trying to make the whole thing in one pass. It cannot be done. And he's checking for the fit here. And now he's going to show you something. He's going to show you a, a technique that I actually learned from Kent White. And what he's done, he's put a little oil on a, a paper towel. And he's rubbing over the whole surface. And he's not checking, uh, or he's not wiping off the oil here. He's found out that the paper towel makes his fingers more sensitive to the highs and lows of the panel. So as he rubs and finds a, a, a low area, he'll circle it. If he finds an area that is just barely low and just barely needs some help, he'll put a kind of a zigzag line on it. So he's basically drawing the topography of the panel as it is now and what needs to be adjusted. In the left corner there, you can see it's raised a little bit. So when you have an area that's raised, what you do is you hammer not that area, but just beyond that area so that the panel settles down. And his normal lubricant is just a spray of WD-40. It's convenient that way. I've seen people use motor oil. I've seen them use sewing machine oil. That's expensive. Uh, pretty much anything works. I think the WD-40 spray is probably the most convenient. Note he's got really good ear protection on. You really need it for these big yoders. And there he goes. The... Uh, the Yoder, of course, is a classic power hammer that was developed in the uh, 1890s, uh, just before World War I came along. And, uh, you know, it's the hero of World War II. Uh, a lot of aircraft factories use them. Uh, car coach builders use them, of course. The aircraft industry found that they could tack three or four sheets of aluminum together, you know, tack weld it, and then shape three or four panels at one time. The machine is that powerful. Do you really need something that powerful to make automobile skins? Probably not. But it is a classic machine and uh, people know how to use it. Bobby sure does. You notice that he keeps the machine moving. If you stay in one place, you are going to get a lump there very quickly. By stretching the edge, as he's doing now, the, the panel will tend to flatten out a little bit. 
So it's kind of like an English wheel, even though it's not really meant to, to shrink, not with these dies. Uh, in a sense, you can shrink by just stretching an edge and bring, bring the uh, panel down. Look at that oil. That's a very, very thin coat, but it's enough. For different length tops. Oh, okay. Yeah, because this buck will fit several different shapes. Uh huh. And the tops are shorter. I see. So this uh, top is for a Model A coupe. And the shorter ones are for uh, 32 Ford, uh, three window and five window coupes, um, the Plymouth. Mm hmm. And this was the first buck you made. Yeah. Wow, cool. Good. And I've got a bunch of them over there and then a bunch of in container. Okay, as Bobby goes back to work, we're going to check out some of his bucks. Wire bucks, which is what you see there, even though it's made out of quarter-inch tubing. Wire bucks are probably the best. It's what the Italians mostly use. You have excellent visibility behind them. Here's another roof insert. Okay, there you go. Um, more and more uh, people are using power hammers. Bailey has come out with a new, very inexpensive power hammer that, that works really well. Uh, I've got a book called uh, Power Hammers. I hope you'll check out my books. If you're in Pomona, stop in and see Bobby. Uh, the, the custom work he does is just incredible. It was a real treat for Ben and I to get to visit. Okay, bye-bye.